right. Welcome to another chat with Avid, David Harpole and Jack Arnold. Good to see you as always. Good to see you, Dave. Uh, if you're wondering, yes, it's sunny in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I, was, I was thinking about this earlier. I, I think I do that just because I'm from Ohio and I don't know. I just, yeah. you know, you Floridians take advantage or take for granted rather yeah. the perfect sunshine yeah, every day. I like it. I like the weather update. Let it rip. It was raining over the weekend. That's true. It was odd. It was, that, yeah. that is true. That, that, uh, that is weird when you experience a full day of rain. So yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. If you're watching or listening, um, today we're going to talk about world records. And the reason this came up is I was just reading some random things. If you have an iPhone, you might have came across these same things. So that's really what it stemmed from. But as I was reading them about world records, and I'm going to talk about two specific things. One is about a, a person, an individual that just recently had a, re, um, a world record and then kind of ended her run, if you will. And then second is a corporation that's done one. And as I was thinking about this and how it tied back into finance, we talk a lot, Jack, about our behavioral tendencies, the way we view things. And I started to think, man, there are some really good tiebacks into what we do and these people or corporations that hit world records. So... I guess I would start by off the top of your head, what would you say would be some characteristics to people who might be world record holders? Hmm. That's a good question. Well, I mean, you'd have to be a little bit uh, kind of type A, I would think. I don't know. I guess it would depend. It would depend on the record, I guess. Like, what kind of record are you setting? You'd have to be right. pretty. You'd have to have some kind of ambition, some focus for sure. Definitely. I mean, it, definitely to focus on something. Um, maybe just like an odd drive to have world records. Like I remember okay. watching that. There's like that Rob Deerdeck guy. He used to be on that. Oh, yeah. big show. He like had a whole thing. We just like set skateboarding records with the Guinness guy and he had like seven of them. So anyways, I don't know, just like a, like a weird right. drive to set world records. Maybe I, I'm, well, you know, I think I'm, those are good. Yeah. Passion. Right? Yeah. Right. Maybe True. a vision. Maybe yep. there's dumb luck in there. Maybe you kind of just stumble into thing, something. And then you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm maybe this is some sort of world record. I don't know, but I, I definitely think there right. are all of those. I don't personally have any world records. Uh, <laughs> right. Maybe some claim you know to fames of. that I know of. That's true. I should look. Maybe right. some claim to fames, but not world records. But this first lady that I'm going to use an example, and this was an article that I just found on CNN. It was written by, I'm going to look at the other screen here, uh, Rachel Trent. This was just last weekend. And the headline was, woman with the world's longest nails cuts them <sighs> after nearly 30 years. 30 years. So the, the headline grabbed me right off the bat. Right. I mean, 30 years of growing nails is a long time. So let me just read the first paragraph. Ayana Williams, Ayana, I hope I pronounced that right, of Houston, Texas, broke the Guinness World Record for the world's longest fingernails in 2017 when they measured, are you ready for this? Yeah. Nearly 19 feet long. It took her more than two bottles of nail polish and 20 hours to do her nails back then. Wait, hold on a second. So how does she, oh, she, you mean painting her nails took two hours. I mean, she's yeah. not clipping them. So obviously Sorry. that doesn't, that's not part of it. I read it wrong. So it was two bottles of nail polish, 20 <laughs> hours to get a manicure at that well, length. What did she paint them with? Like a paint sprayer? How? Well, hopefully we can, <laughs> that probably would have been quicker, but no, she went to like a nail salon, I guess. And hopefully we can get a, a uh, picture up here for you on the recording, but it looks as though, yeah, she's sitting in basically a chair at a manicure thing. And I thought it was uh, a, a couple of things like perspective, right? 19 feet. So I just, right before That's we hopped insane. on here, went outside, I drive a Kia Sorento, uh, Sorento. That's a SUV. It has a third row. It's not massive, like a Yukon or something, but it's pretty good. It's just under 16 feet long. <laughs> that's insane so now put that into perspective so the, the article goes on to talk about 
that she got them cut over the weekend. So for whatever reason, she said, you know what? I'm good to go. I'm going to have them cut right before she had them cut down at um, this nail place again. She did one more final measurement. You want to guess at what she came in as? I don't know. 24 <laughs> feet? Like how much would they grow in three years? What? You must have read the article. 20, I know. 24 feet, seven inches was the final measurement. So there's a lot of fun facts in the article. And I think the one other thing just to throw in here um, about Ayana is she is going to keep them to a manageable six inches. <laughs> manageable, right? <laughs> but then the ones that she had trimmed off, she's actually giving to um, Ripley's Believe It or Not right here in Orlando, Florida to be on display. So I think that's a pretty cool little thing. Um, that's incredible. Incredible. As I was reading that and tying back to what we're talking about, I just thought it was interesting. Think of some of the characters that we talked about, right? A vision, maybe type A, wanting to accomplish something. But then think about how long that took Ayana. 30 years. That's her last trip, the article says, to the nail parlor was 30 years ago. This is back in the 1990s. So another thing that stands out to me as a characteristic is perseverance. Sure. Yeah. Right. How many people do you think along the way would have said something crazy to her? Like, uh, when are you getting your nails cut? <laughs> yeah. Or, so I think that's important to think about when, it, when you think about even financial decisions that we make. A lot of the things that we do today and that we see and that we're involved in as planners, it's really easy to just go with the flow, right? Follow mm -hmm. the crowd. The things that really set people apart, in our, my opinion anyway, is doing things that aren't normal. Well, I have to say, I love that we're taking world record nail growing and turning it into like <laughs> some kind of uh, analogy to, to, to growing wealth and like financial planning stuff. I love it. I think it's great. I think it's good also, like like you said, I mean, even at six inches is long. I mean, but yeah, at one foot, you'd think you'd be constantly hearing what's up with your nails and like, just like the we, you know, it's obviously an odd thing to do, but like just the dedication to keep doing that after it gets to be eight feet and right. like continue to grow them out. Like, yeah, definitely some, an odd personality probably, but definitely like dedication. There's no doubt about it. And for sure. For sure. And as you're, if you are listening and you're in the kind of wealth building stage, it's a lot easier to spend money that you make spend money that you don't even have yet, right? Oh, getting that tax return, you're gonna get that bonus, and before you know it, you've spent it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot more difficult to save consistently because it's quite boring. But I would attest, and people that have done this would also probably say, your future self is gonna thank you. So I guess the takeaway from Ayana and her <laughs> nails would be <laughs> stick in there, keep doing it. So. The second one that I want to talk about is on a corporate side. And I, and I think it's interesting, too, because we own a business, Avid. There's tons of businesses here in, in St. Pete. And I think there's some similar characteristics to how you could, I don't know that Avid's ever going to set a world record, but do this as a company. So here's the second one. Again, hopefully we can throw this up so that you can see it. It's actually a video. Um, it's a YouTube video. I found it on um, a site called Engadget. It just talks about technology things. It's about 50 seconds. It's really worth it uh, if you care about gadget tech stuff. But Hyundai, right? You've heard of them? Yep. So, or is it Hyundai? I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's I think it's Hyundai or Hyundai. Hyundai. There you go. But Version it, three. Either, whatever works. I know what you're talking about. It, anyway, so they own um, Genesis, which is a, a car, which I never knew that until I yeah. actually read this article. So Genesis just set a world record, and I don't want to botch it. This is an article done by uh, John Fingas just this past month. And I guess what's really big now in, in the tech world is to do with these drone shows. So they basically, yes. I have seen you've those. seen this? I've seen, they do them like firework displays and stuff. I've seen, uh, I, they make pictures in the sky with drones. I have seen it. It's cool. Exactly. I have not seen it. So I stumbled across this one and it was in Shanghai. 
And Genesis was essentially marketing to the city, to the population, the car. And they used drones. And the world record was set because they used 3,281 drones. That's cool. It was amazing. It really is like a light show in the air. And it shows their logo. And um, it's super cool. Hopefully we can get the link out to you. Or just Google it and it would pop up. But... What does it have to do with finance? Well, in my head, everything. I started thinking about companies, right? And the P, and obviously most people make up companies, but what do you have to do as a company to get to the point where you are so different, you're setting world records? And I would say it has to start with some sort of cohesive vision. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and in a general sense, I would 100% agree with that. Some kind of cohesive vision as to, I mean, we've talked about a million times, like the objective versus, you know, matching tools to objectives. Like yes. at some point you have, you need to be clear on what your, you know, what your objective is. Like, what is your kind of, the, what's the point of whatever it is that you're doing? And I right. think like you could always, it's easier to backfill in how to get there when you're clear on, you know, where it is that you're that you're going no question about it yeah and then think about like from a company standpoint you know even if you're you don't have to be a billion dollar a million dollar company like hyundai um (laughs) you could be as small as avid or any number of these firms here in in st pete or companies is normally have a team of people there so you you really do have to have like-mindedness you know as a team that goes to the vision that says all right we're willing to stick with the plan no matter what. Well, yeah, there's also, I think advertising is always kind of like an interesting thing because it's hard to, there's not like an immediate payoff. And even if there is a payoff, right. sometimes it's it's hard to measure. Um, I'm not sure who it was, but one thing I do remember about marketing classes from college is that, you know, they would say, uh, half of my marketing budget is a waste of money. The problem is I just don't know which half because it's like hard to measure. So, you know, if you're doing something like, oh, we're going to fly all these drones up in the sky and do this world record. Like, you know, if you weren't, if you didn't have some kind of maybe vision or kind of, there were some kind of cohesive or some freedom, I guess, to, for the, you know, marketing department to be somewhat creative, it, it would be easy to say, what a waste. This thing's going to last five minutes, but then obviously we're talking about it. It's right. on YouTube. Like it's obviously, you know, it's, it's achieving its goal, but it's hard to measure. So not, you know, not everything is immediately like you can just look, not everything's kind of gets boiled down to numbers either, I guess is more the point. No, I think that's exactly right. And that can translate into, again, our personal decisions that we make about the money that we have or that we think that we're going to and how important it is to think about those things. It's part of our tagline, think, plan, live. The first step is think. Let's let's sit down and talk about what is most important. What are your aspirations? And then start to work towards things as opposed to shoving down, you know, tactical ways of yes. doing things, right? Because your situation is different than my situation. It's different than the person across the street's situation. And getting to know that, I think, ahead of time is super important. I, I, absolutely. Uh, the, I, am, I think the kind of, uh, maybe you call it like tactification of things, like that everybody is just like so focused on individual tactics, I right. think it... Um, leads a lot of times can like lead you down paths that you don't necessarily want to go down just because you're blindly applying tactics and even these videos that we're doing that the, the, a lot of advice would say we'll give people tactics like five ways to blah 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 and you know 10 ways to have fun in the sun and like and like you know like yes. and people like dig those things and you get a lot of you know, you get a lot of views that way. There's a lot of, you know, wisdom that says make list, give people tactics because that's what people like. And I would say, sure, I, I suppose. I think it's a waste of time. It's yeah. it's like uh, empty calories of knowledge. Like, great, you know, like lots of tactics of taking all of those things and putting them into some kind of cohesive whole is right. the hard part. No doubt like, about like, it. Like knowing, here's, like if you knew, here's how you scramble an egg, here's how you cook a piece of bacon, here's how you make cream cheese frosting. That doesn't get you anywhere closer 
to making to a balanced breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Then how, knowing how those things work together, uh, right. which is without a doubt, much more difficult to know the, so anyways, yeah, yeah. even that, like, you know, e- even going back to this whole drone thing, knowing that you can fly drones and they have, they can have lights on them means nothing if you don't have some kind of cohesive idea as to where that fits and how you can apply that. And, you know, I, I'm just, I'm sure at some point we're going to have to start doing some goofy tactic things. I know sometimes we've done them in the past, but I'm not a giant fan, not because I don't think that it's helpful to know, to know. Yeah. I just don't think that it really gets you any closer to what you're trying to do without, like, to your point, you've, you're thinking about what you're trying to accomplish first and foremost. Right. No, no doubt about it. And I think the, the way that we view these things is super important. Like, I would love to interview Ayana to say, all right, how did this even come about? Was it like something you've always done? Was there some trigger in the past? Like that, because again, I just can't stop thinking about 30 years of doing the same thing and being committed to it. It's pretty amazing. And then just say, okay, I'm good. I'm done. Six yeah, inches right. is enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious what, what was the mind shift that said 24 and a half feet is just, you know what? That's the upper limit. Any right. longer, I just couldn't, like what was the... Maybe you just got, but I think you would be tired of them at 18 feet, wouldn't you? Like what? I would think. What's what's 24 and and a half? And there's a technical term in there too, which is there's actually another world record for like a two hand length of fingernails, if I read the article correctly. And this was set back in like the 70s. Let me see if I can find her name. Um, Lee Redman, 1979 is when she started growing them. And her record got to 28 feet until she lost them in a car accident. I think she's okay in 2009, but similar thing, like just something. That was a something happened and she, they stopped growing it, but. Are we uh, surprised that she got in a car accident with 28 <laughs> feet? Like how did she? Uh, she had to have been passenger, maybe back seat. She, I don't you, know. She can't be driving. I mean, it's like, how the heck could you drive Not a car? to get off subject on fingernails <laughs> here, but it, I mean, do you think they just curl and curl? Well, I've seen ones like not this girls. I have seen ones that like, I think what, I don't know, but it, I think they get so long, like at some point they're heavy and I think yeah. they start to, they straighten themselves out. But I do think that they so kind of curl at the bottom, but it's just, like, we will, we per, I personally will never know. No, I'm not going to find out. Well, Jack, thanks for uh, humoring me here on today's avid chat <laughs> sure. with some world records. I would say to end this, you might not become a world record holder, but there are definitely things you can do in your personal life, in your family life, in your financial life that can help you set your own personal records. And I think those yeah. milestones, to set them, to review them, to have somebody to support you with them, are super good um, in order to accomplish the things that you want to. Start with a vision, put actions into place, celebrate them along the way. Right. And one day you never know, you might have the longest toenails ever. (laughs) You never know. All right, Jack. (laughs) Have a great day, buddy. See you next week. See ya. 